Let us now take a look at what is called chemical composition type problems. When we consider the composition of a material, it is normally expressed in one of two ways, either as a chemical formula, such as for hydrogen peroxide H2O2, or it is written in terms of weight percents of the materials used to make that material. For example, hydrogen peroxide is 5.9% hydrogen and 94.1% oxygen. Formulas are particularly useful when working with chemical equations where we're concerned primarily with the relative number of moles of different chemical species and weight percent is extremely valuable when we are ordering material so that we can make a particular material because materials are usually ordered in weights. They are not ordered as moles. Another consideration is that there are two types of formulas. There are what's called empirical formulas and there are what we're going to call molecular formulas. And these are related to each other. So let me first demonstrate for you the relationship between these two types of formulas. And then we will take up a sample problem which deals with all of these variables that I've listed here. The molecular formula and empirical formula. Probably the best way to think about these as a chain that has repeating units. And the empirical formula is equivalent to a chain link. The molecular formula can be thought of as the entire chain. And so the empirical formula is either in reality or merely mathematically the smallest repeating unit that can be put together to make up a molecular formula. And in this case, there are n empirical formula units that make up the molecular formula. So if we wanted to do something mathematically, we might say that the molecular formula is equal to n, the number of empirical formula units. Or we might even represent it something like this. The molecular formula is equal to the empirical formula, and it repeats n number of times. Confused? Let's sort it out working through a sample problem. And to assist in keeping all of this straight, I have this little house-shaped figure, and I'm going to map as I do these calculations from one spot to the other to help you remember the different steps that it takes to go from a molecular formula to weight percent to empirical formula. And then our third thing we're going to do is to convert that empirical formula to a molecular formula. Let's illustrate this with hydrogen peroxide. How do we express that in terms of a weight percent? Well, the first thing we need to do is to convert the molecular formula, which deals with moles, to grams, which is a weight. So you can see that we have a simple mole to gram conversion. For one mole of peroxide, I have two moles of hydrogen. I know that each mole of hydrogen weighs 1.0 grams, and so I have a total of 2.0 grams of hydrogen. Similarly for oxygen, I have two moles of oxygen, and I know that each mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams, and so I wind up with a total of 32 grams of oxygen. And there we have the two materials we need, but that's not our stopping point. What we are most interested in is taking this to a weight percent. So let's do that calculation. Well, the percent of anything, if you recall, is the part divided by the whole times 100. So let's figure the weight percent for each of these materials, hydrogen and oxygen. The weight percent hydrogen then is going to be 2.0, that's the part, but what is the whole here? 
Well, the whole is going to be the sum of the parts, of course, and our parts are 2 grams of hydrogen and 32 parts of oxygen. So we have a total of 34 parts of hydrogen peroxide. And so let's finish this up. So it's 2 divided by 34 parts divided by whole times 100. And that gives 5.9 weight percent hydrogen for hydrogen peroxide. And how about oxygen? That is 32 divided by 34 times 100, and that's equal to 94.1 percent oxygen. And there you have it. That's the first step of what we wanted to learn. We now have expressed hydrogen peroxide as a weight percent. Let us now consider the next type of problem, which is what if we're given a weight percent and we need to determine the formula? The first thing we do is convert a weight percent to an empirical formula. Now this is where it gets a little tricky and you need to know a couple of tips. The first one is to be able to go from weight percent we have to first convert percent to grams. And we do this by using a very, very simple device. And that is, we're going to assume that we have a 100 gram sample. What this allows us to do is a very simple trick, is merely to replace the percent sign with a gram. For you see, 5.9% of a 100 gram sample is 5.9 grams and 94.1% of a 100 gram sample is 94.1 grams. The next step is to convert from grams of material to an empirical formula. What do we know about our empirical formula? Well, we know it has a hydrogen in it, we know it has an oxygen in it, and that's as much as we know for now. So our goal is to now find out how many moles are in 5.9 grams of hydrogen and how many moles of oxygen can I get from 94.1 grams. So with that, let's go. For hydrogen, 5.9 grams of hydrogen and again we know that there's 1.0 grams of hydrogen for every mole of hydrogen and so what we wind up is the number 5.9 moles of hydrogen. Similarly for oxygen, 94.1 grams of oxygen also gives us 5.9 moles, but this time of oxygen. So we can now flesh out our answer here a little bit. We now know our formula is H 5.9 O 5.9. I have the proper mole ratio, but I do not have it in proper form. For these must be expressed as whole number integers. So that's the next thing we need to know is this little trick of how to get that done. And the answer is it's either a one or two step process. The first step is to divide through by the smaller or smallest coefficient. And if that doesn't solve it, is to then to multiply all the coefficients by some integer that will make all of them an integer. So let's see what we have here. Let's apply the first step. So the smaller is 5.9, but we have to do the same thing to each one of them. And so we wind up with H101 or our empirical formula for peroxide is just HO. And so there we have it. We now know the empirical formula. We have now answered the second type of question. We have gone from a weight percent to an empirical formula. Next, we want to answer the third type of question, which is how do we convert an empirical formula to the molecular formula? 
To do that, at least one other piece of information needs to be known. The number of repeating units. We do not know that answer, and we do not know the molecular formula. So we essentially have one equation and two unknowns, and that's unsolvable. Usually, with a question like this, you will also be given the molecular weight of the material. The reason that is often given is in the real world, molecular weights are normally quite easy to come by. And so, for a problem like this, it would have been given that the molecular weight of the product is 34 grams per mole. How does that help us get to the value of N and hence the molecular formula? Well, if we have an empirical formula, HO, it's a fairly easy matter to determine the molar mass or the, or the empirical weight. And in this case, we know what the empirical weight is going to be. I have one hydrogen, and I wind up with a mass of 17 grams per mole. Now, this is very straightforward. So 17 times what number equals 34? Very easy to do in our heads. N must be equal to 2. So if N is equal to 2, then we know we have two empirical formula units in our molecular equation. So here we go. Empirical formula, I have two units. So let me write that HO. That's my empirical formula. And I know N is equal to 2. And now all I have to do is straighten that out and realize that what this means is I have two hydrogens and I have two oxygens. And so, starting with the weight percent, we were able to back calculate and see that our formula was H2O2. And indeed, we know from where we started, it was H2O2. And with that, I hope that helps you understand the three main types of questions that we can answer using that little house framework. We can go from a molecular formula to weight percent, from a weight percent to an empirical formula, and if we also know the molecular weight of the formula, then we can back calculate the molecular formula from the empirical formula using molecular and empirical formula weights.